Hi, I'm Chloe. Thank you for visiting our video. Find out why our team can provide you the best services for your needs. Hundreds of clients can't be wrong. Check out the following video. Real estate, real estate with real with real Kasha, Kasha. So hail, hail. Welcome to Washington America Show with international multimedia journalist, multidimensional, multifaceted artist and director of Human Rights Justice Council USA, Dr. Kasha So hail. Bylaws are the rules and regulations that govern the operation of the condominium. These rules are self-imposed, in that all unit owners must agree to them in order to reside in the condominium development. In order to create a condominium development, the declarant must submit a copy of the bylaws to the board. The bylaws must address the following matters. The form of self-governance for the unit owners. If there will be an executive body, trustee, board of directors, officers, how any executive body will be elected or appointed. The exact duties and responsibilities of this body. He bylaws must address the following matters. The extent to which the executive body may delegate responsibilities to a management agent. The accounting and management records that must be maintained. Scheduled meetings of all owners, at least annually, and of the executive body. Statutory requirements for meeting notices, 21 days for annual meetings, 7 days for all others, and the covenants, conditions and restrictions CCRs, that apply to all unit owners. The bylaws of the condominium may be changed by a simple majority vote of the condominium members. The statute specifies that by default, at least 33 to one third of a percent of the voting interest must be present at the meeting before a vote can begin. Bylaws may impose a higher or lower percentage, but no less than 10% of the voting interest must be present to amend the condominium bylaws. The declarant must also develop a public offering statement, POS, along with the declaration and bylaws. The POS must provide the following. The name of the declarant. A narrative description of the condominium including the number of units and any future plan units. Copies of management contracts and a statement of the relationship between the declarant and any contractor. General status of construction or improvements. Encumbrances, liens and easements affecting title. The POS must provide the following. Financing terms, if offered by the declarant, and proposed first-year budget and unit assessments. The POS must be provided to the first buyer of any condominium unit only. The initial purchaser of the condominium has a five-day right to rescind the contract, without penalty. The five-day period begins on the date of contract ratification or upon receipt of the POS, and any amendments, whichever is later. The right to rescind the contract may be exercised for any reason. At closing, the buyer acquires a fee simple ownership interest in his or her individual unit and an undivided percentage interest in the common elements of the condominium. The declarant is responsible for all units in the development until any unit is sold. Upon sale, the buyer is responsible for his or her individual unit. The declarant remains responsible for the management and maintenance of the entire project until 75% of the units are sold. At this time, the responsibilities shift to the association of unit owners. The declarant remains a member of the owners association by virtue of the fact that he is the owner of the unsold units. In 
In the event of any resale of a unit by an owner, other than the declarant, the seller must provide the following documents to the buyer prior to the contract date. A copy of the most current annual financial reports of the association. Any capital expenditures anticipated during the current or succeeding fiscal year. Current assessments or other fees levied on the unit owners. The amount of reserves established for specific projects, replacement, or repairs to the condominium. Any pending suits or judgments to which the association is a party. In the event of any resale of a unit by an owner, other than the declarant, the seller must provide the following documents to the buyer prior to the contract date. Specific details related to insurance coverage. A current copy of the condominium declaration and amendments. A copy of the current bylaws and CCRs. A statement that any changes made to either the unit or the common elements are not in violation of zoning ordinances or the condominium declaration, and a statement of the right to install or use solar panels. While the seller must provide these documents, the association may charge a fee for preparing the documents, $150 for two hard copies, and total of $125 for up to five electronic copies. If the buyer fails to receive the required documentation before contract ratification, the association loses all right to claim previously unpaid assessments, and may be liable to the seller for actual damages, not to exceed $1,000. This does not excuse a buyer's non-compliance with the condominium rules and regulations. Each unit owner has an ownership interest and voting rights in the governing body, association, of the condominium. The interest is generally in proportion to the unit size and amenities. For example, a three-bedroom unit may have a larger interest than a two-bedroom unit. The exact proportion of ownership assigned to each unit is detailed in the declaration documents. The Unit Owners Association, by statute, has a lien on every condominium unit for unpaid assessments levied against it. The lien is junior to real estate tax liens or other liens recorded prior to the filing of the original declaration. The decision to dissolve, abandon, or terminate the condominium form of ownership requires the approval of 80% of the voting interest of the Unit Owners Association. Timeshare Act, governs the creation and transfer of timeshare properties in Virginia. The Timeshare Act defines a timeshare as, a right to occupy a unit or any of several units during five or more separated time periods over a period of at least five years, including renewal options, coupled with a freehold estate or an estate for years in a timeshare project or specific portion. In order to create a timeshare, the declarant, developer, must file and record a timeshare project instrument that defines the project being created. A timeshare association must be established in accordance with the Virginia Non-Stock Corporations Act before any timeshare estates are conveyed. The project instrument must include A proposed budget Management and maintenance agreements Rules, covenants, and restrictions on owners, and Insurance coverage provided, and other information relative to the project being created. The developer must remain in control of the project during the developer control period and is responsible for management and maintenance during this period. The developer must also prepare a public offering statement to fully disclose the characteristics of the project. The timeshare POS is very similar to the POS filed for a condominium. If the timeshare project is being converted from another type of ownership, certain information is required. This information includes, capital improvements and repairs made during the past three years, reserves established, and the present condition of structural components. The current tenants of the property being converted must be given at least a 90-day notice of the intent to convert. These tenants have 60 days to contract with the developer to purchase the unit currently occupied if that unit is to be part of the timeshare project, without substantial alteration. Tenants on month-to-month -month leases must have at least a 120-day notice to vacate. The initial purchaser has a 7-day right to rescind the contract without penalty. The 7 days run from the date of contract ratification or receipt of the POS, whichever is later. This right of rescission is statutory and cannot be waived. Any earnest money deposits or down payments to purchase a timeshare interest must be placed in a separate escrow account established by the developer, or in the regular escrow account of a real estate broker or attorney. However, if the project consists of more than 25 units, the developer can instead obtain a surety bond or letter of credit with the common interest community, and the amount will depend on the total amount of deposits. If a purchaser exercises his or her right of rescission, the developer must refund monies advanced by the buyer within 45 days without penalty.
So, since you've learned more about us, click the link in the description to see how you can contact us. Please share this video, subscribe to our channel. Are you looking to buy or sell a home anytime soon? If so, you've come to the right place. We'd like to give you the opportunity to work with one of the top local real estate agents and get the best deal when buying or selling a home. The fact is, experienced agents can often get you a 2 to 10% better deal on the purchase or sale of a property, mostly due to their experience in the local marketplace and their ability to negotiate the best deal. So contact our top agent now and start the process of buying or selling your home.